If I asked you which of the teeth before you belonged to Tyrannosaurus Rex, you'd probably be mistaken, because this enormous weapon wasn't anchored in the jaws of any dinosaur, but rather a whale, a whale that once prowled the seas for prey to sustain its huge mass. Millions of years ago, in the waters off the coast of southern Australia, swam pods of ancient baleen whales. But these peaceful filter feeders didn't spend their lives carefree, far from it, because in the very same seas roamed much bigger creatures, which they would have feared immensely. They lived in the toothy shadow of one of the most menacing killers in the history of life. The man who found the tooth in February 2016 at a fossil site not far from Melbourne, Australia, was an amateur fossil collector named Murray Orr. At first, he was sure his life was in danger when he thought he'd picked up an undetonated artillery shell. But fear turned into amazement when his eye caught an important detail, a curved tip. He had a tooth, which he guessed by its shape came from a sperm whale, the animal once feared as the ship-sinking terror made famous by Herman Melville's novel Moby Dick. The sperm whales, named Physeter macrocephalus, are the biggest of the toothed whales. But the tooth discovered by Orr is 30 centimeters long, more than twice as large as the animal we know today. Contrary to popular myth, sperm whales aren't reckless killers. They only have teeth in their lower jaws, and even those ones aren't used for catching their prey because it's under the cover of darkness that they track their prey of choice, giant and jumbo squids, which they hunt at great depths. They don't bite the giants, rather, they suck them down their throats. These specialized hunters are among the only whales from a group called the Physeteroids, but in recent years, new fossil discoveries made on several continents prove that they were once much more diverse. While these ancient forms, like the seven meter long Brigmophysiter, whose fossils have been discovered in Japan were much smaller animals, they were anything but harmless. Compared to their surviving, squid-sucking relatives, these animals led very different lives. With jaws densely packed with gripping teeth at the front and shearing teeth at the back, there's no question that these were active, raptorial carnivores, capable of hunting large fish and even small baleen whales. During a chapter in the Age of Mammals called the Miocene Epic, between 14 and 6 million years ago, several types of these sperm whales could be found in seas spanning the globe. But none of them match the description of the specimen found in Australia. Orr's tooth is far too big. The owner of the tooth was another animal altogether. Though rare, similar gigantic teeth have been found at Miocene sites in both North and South America for over a century, but with so little to go on, the owner of these teeth remained elusive. All that was certain was that the Miocene seas were once the home of behemoths, whose bones were still waiting to be found. In years prior to 2008, more gigantic teeth began turning up in Chile. In November of that year, an international team set out searching for answers. They didn't travel to the southern coast of Peru to study the whales swimming offshore. Instead, they were there to scour the lifeless, windswept terrain of the Okukahe Desert, especially the dry and desolate Ica Valley, because these hills are made of rock layers bearing the story of a prehistoric sea, which over millions of years was habitat for a whole host of marine animals. During the Miocene, the gentle baleen whales that we're familiar with, like the humpback or giant blue whales, didn't yet exist. Instead, the seas were chocked full of dozens of species of smaller filter feeders hailing from a now extinct lineage called the Cetatheres, and on the desert floor of the Ica Valley, you'll find the greatest concentration of these and other fossil whales anywhere on Earth, where countless skeletons lie patiently out in the open, freshly eroded from their rocky tombs, ripe for the picking by fossil hunters. But the owner of the giant teeth remained as elusive as ever. The international team couldn't find any trace of their giant carnivore, until the very last day of their trip, when a large skull was spotted. Though it was found broken, upside down, and cemented firmly in rock, it was clear from a series of circular holes in the upper jaw, deep sockets for gigantic teeth, that they had their beast. The specimen was taken to the city of Lima, where the beast's skull was assembled and studied, and where after over a century of hiding, it would finally get a name. Leviathan Melvilli. And what a beast it was. 
When the paleontologists who found it released a study describing the animal in 2010, nothing like it had ever been seen. Though the entire skeleton behind the head remains unknown, it's believed that it was just as massive as even the biggest of today's bull sperm whales. But while sperm whale skulls are long, slender constructions, they are weak compared to the thick and wide skull of Leviathan. Its head was specially adapted to house its set of 40 enormous interlocking teeth, and as the presence of tremendous attachment sites to anchor its swollen jaw muscles indicates, its bite must have been formidable. The weight of the evidence adds up. Leviathan was a whale hunter, undeniably an efficient hypercarnivore, the top of the Miocene food chain. But the presence of other large teeth found in the Pisco as well as at other Miocene sites prove that the monstrous whale wasn't the only killer in these seas. Carcharocles megalodon, the most massive shark that ever lived, also swam in the very same waters, hunting the very same prey. The presence of both of these huge carnivores from the same time period is a testament to the incredible diversity of baleen whales living on Earth at the time. As many as 25 contemporaneous sets of baleen whale species flourished in the waters of the Miocene. Never in their history was this group ever so diverse, as the simultaneous occurrence of two apex predators clearly shows carnivores were ready to take advantage of such an abundant food source. Thankfully, Murray Orr, the Australian who found the tooth in February 2016 generously donated his specimen to the collection of the Melbourne Museum, where scientists will study it to learn more about these ancient sperm whales. His find is important, because it represents the first evidence of these giants found anywhere outside the Americas. And at 5 million years old, it's 7 million years younger than the skull from Peru, proving that these giant killer sperm whales were around for much longer than anybody had previously suspected. Nobody yet knows whether the Australian animal is Leviathan or one of its as yet undiscovered relatives. Whatever the case, there are more killers out there waiting to be found. And as is often said with fossil species, if we're to better understand these phenomenal creatures that once roamed the ancient seas of Peru, Australia, and everywhere in between, we need to find more.